Why does your company deserve more money? Yes. Dun, dun. The hardest conversation I have to have with the founder is when they've spent their one to $2 million angel round, but haven't found product market fit. Unfortunately, I have to ask them a very unforgiving question. Why does your company deserve more money? Yeah, this is so hard. This is really hard for YC companies. Yeah. Like in one way, we try to make YC companies feel very special. And certainly the investing community often makes YC companies feel really special. But man, isn't it weird that someone who's given $2 million to do something and doesn't succeed thinks, you know what, I need another $2 million. Yeah. Like, you know, it's like part of me just wants to like bring people back to the real world. You know, <laughs> it's like, you know, maybe you do, right? Maybe the next $2 million is going to get make it work, right? Maybe. I'm not willing to say it won't, but I think we should just like... Well. It's certainly a lot easier to raise that money if you've done something for the first $2 million, <laughs> you know? And I think sometimes founders, once again, sometimes founders kind of cargo cult. Like, mm-hmm. they think, oh, well, we we have this team. We built a team, right? We have this product, right? we got a cool office. Yeah, we have a cool office. Like, look at what we've done, right? And it's no. like, nobody's grading you on those things. <laughs> like, those are means to an end, not an end. Like, you can't be like, oh, I'm an NFL coach, and look, we have a team. We have this amazing stadium, right? You should, you should renew me, right? And it's like, well, the record of the team is like zero wins. Yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah. like, you can't get another contract if you have no wins, you know? Yeah. Moreover, if you, you, I mean, you might have all the MVPs, but if they can't play together, you know? Then no wins, no right? Wins. And so I think that, like, people like to confuse means for ends because, like, yeah. means are a lot easier to get. I can go out and get an office. I can go out and hire, right? Solving people's problems, that's hard. Yeah. So um, a lot of the time I have to have these conversations with founders where I'm just like, look, like, what is an alternative path? Like, if you don't really deserve money right now, what is an alternative path? And like the sad but true fact is cutting burn and trying to get to break even is more often than not the right thing to do if you haven't hit product market fit for that first one to two million dollars. More often, that's what's going to create that leverage. You get to break even, and that gives you time to figure things out. You're, you're like, like we said before, like not having product market market fit doesn't mean you're not growing. Doesn't mm-hmm. mean you're not generating revenue, right? It just means that you're not taken off. Yeah. And oftentimes, that just means you need more time. But like sp- asking investors for that time is oftentimes way less fruitful than just cutting burn and giving yourself that time with the revenue that you're generating. Exactly. Um, and like, man, I learned this the hard way at Justin TV. Like, I sometimes I just think at Justin TV, I just had myself completely fooled. Like literally, <laughs> I just, com- like, I was out there pitching a site that like f- the half of the usage was spreading copyrighted content. It was like a public site. Like, like any investor could just, before the meeting, go to our website and like in three clicks see Content we didn't have the rights to. And then I would go in and try to pitch them on how I was going to be a billion dollar business, right? Like, I don't even know how I did it looking yeah. back, right? Like, you know, crazy. You seem founder. to have made every mistake. So, many, many mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> many of the mistakes. Yeah. Uh, I like to write about things where I have personal mistake experience. <laughs> um, but, like, I will tell you that when we, when we broke even at Justin TV, yeah. That was the moment of like infinite clarity. And what was weird is that like looking back, one of the things I see in other founders and I recognize in myself is that when you're operating on the investor's dime, oftentimes you're trying to optimize what the investor wants to hear. And oftentimes you're trying to structure your pitch and your strategy to what's going to get us more money. Because it turns out the investor is really your customer because they're the only one giving you the money you need to survive. And your users become secondary. Um, When you hit break even, there's this magical moment where you realize, wait a second, like I can just generate money from my users. I don't need these investors anymore. And like strangely, like weirdly, (laughs) the only group of users who, the only group of people who are harder to understand than users are investors. <laughs> like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for many people, some people can just spin investors, you know, some people have a way with investors, but yeah. for many people, investors are this like really confusing group. And it's like, well, I'd rather fight the user fight than the investor That's fight. So funny. And like, that was the case for us. Like, yeah. and um, it was so interesting, man, we never had a better strategy. We never had a better plan. We never had better execution. 
than two moments. One, when we were running out of money. Yeah. And two, when we were hit break even. Um, it was just, wow. Like, I, it was, <laughs> the clarity was amazing. And just like, man, the and the fear went away. Yeah. It's like, this isn't going to die tomorrow. <laughs> you know, like. Well, you, you have confidence. And then all of a sudden, when you look at the other side of the table, now you have a product that the investor wants. Right. Isn't that funny? Isn't that funny? Right? When you don't need investment, yeah. guess who comes around? <laughs> oh, you need some more Ronnie? Yeah, no oh, problem. I'll man. cover you guys. Classic. Classic. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I think like basically the way you wrap up is like this is about leverage. So what you say is don't limp into a Series A fundraise. You need to be able to show that you have taken the early investment money and used it sensibly to create a product that people love. You need to have sustained growth to raise a Series A. Understand that and you'll be better off than most startups. <laughs> it's kind of simple, right? <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Um, it's interesting, like we have a, a Series A program at YC and um, we help YC companies um, tends to be like 12 to 24 months after YC, prep for and raise Series A. And at the kickoff meeting, it's very similar to the kickoff meeting at YC. Everyone goes around in circles, says what they do. But the difference is, is that everyone says their revenue too. Mm. And it was so much fun to be at the kickoff meeting for the Series A because, you know, you'd hear some idea. It's like, oh, I'm doing yada, yada, yada. And like, you know, YC, we hear ideas all the time, you know? And it's like, yeah, okay, it's another idea. Seems cool. Yeah. And then the, the founder's like, yeah, and we're doing $5 million in revenue. And you're yeah. like, oh, oh. Ah, yeah. that's different. Yeah. And then the next person's like, yeah, and we're doing $3.5 million in revenue. The next person's like, oh, we're doing $4 million. And it's like so funny how an idea sounds better when like there's a revenue number after it. <laughs> and, and, and so what's so funny is that like, I think what YC is good at is that like, if you can create the business leverage, right? If you can make your business yeah. work, yeah. we can help you present that in the leverage maximizing way. And we can help you do a process that maximizes the leverage that you've created. But you have to create the core leverage. Like you gotta do the work, uh. right? Like you gotta do the work. Like you gotta figure out the part that gets that usage and then we can help you package it and um, sell it most effectively. And so, um, it's fun to see when that works. You can't predict it. Yeah. Like, I, if you asked me years before who was going to be in that Series A program, I would not have known. Um, but man, those founders are far more formidable. Mm -hmm. Like, when they have something, they're like, they're killers. Quiet strength when you, when you got shit. You yeah, don't, you don't need to flaunt it. No, you don't, you don't need a, it's funny because like sometimes I see people with like snazzy pitches and like snazzy, like like things that like remind me of stuff you would hear on like a TV infomercial. And it's like, you don't need that much work when you have a good company. <laughs> like, like usually like you can just like uh, graphs, like you just show graphs. It's and numbers. a few numbers. Yeah. And it's like, oh, wow, that's really working. Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right. Thanks, man. All right. Thank you.